All right, we're live. Hi, everyone. I'm Carly. It's Friday. This is Zoo to You, our virtual safari, and today we are talking about our gibbons. Vin and Briscoe, you're going to see a little bit of training that these two get to do behind the scenes, and then we'll take it out onto the platform where we know our guests love to watch these two play, swing, interact with each other. So we're going to get started with some questions, but first we want to thank our partner, Coda Coffee. They have been so generous. They are matching your donations today up to $2,500. So you can help Denver Zoo raise $5,000 just by donating up to $2,500 today. Coda Coffee so generously is going to match that other $2,500. And for the coffee lovers out there, you can order from Coda Coffee. And when you check out, use the code D-E-N-Z-O-O. -O, that's Den Zoo. And they will donate a portion of their proceeds back to Denver Zoo. So thank you, Coda Coffee for matching those donations and for donating part of your proceeds back to Denver Zoo. So remember that coffee lovers, we all need coffee right now to stay energized and engaged throughout the day. So choose Coda Coffee and put in D-E-N-Z-O-O -O at checkout. So I'm gonna turn it over to Kelsey. Hi everyone, I'm Kelsey. I'm one of the keepers that works with the Gibbons here. We're also with Jen and Matt. So Jen is training Vin, and this is something we are really excited to highlight and show you guys um, some of the training we do behind the scenes with the Gibbons, um, and particularly the training that we do to manage um, Vin's health care. She has diabetes. She was diagnosed about three years ago. Um, so we've been managing that with her diet, but also through uh, medication and training as well. So Jen is going to give her her daily insulin. This is something that she gets every day um, around this time and she gets it voluntarily, which means she actively participates in that training. Um, she knows it's coming, she does it every day, and she could leave at any time if she wanted to. Um, so it's a really cool opportunity that we have to manage her healthcare voluntarily. So Vin can sometimes get a little bit distracted when we're talking during her training. She likes it when um, the trainer is focusing on her. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking just while we do the insulin behavior, and I'm gonna kind of try and zoom up so you guys can see that closer. And then we'll hop back to talking when she's done. Yeah. All right, everyone, so what you saw there was Vin voluntarily presenting her shoulder so that she could get her insulin donation. Thank you so much for the donation, Christina. She just donated $5. Thank you so much for what you can do donate right now. So Kelsey, tell us a little about, bit about Vin beyond her diabetes. She is a well-known character here yes, at Denver Zoo. She is definitely one of our favorites as well as the guests. Um, she is pretty interesting and loves to put on a show outside, which we'll show you in a couple minutes. Um, but she's really unique when it comes to training as well. She really has um, a really good relationship with her keepers. She has a lot of trust in us, which allows us to do things like give her that insulin every day. Um, we also train her certain behaviors like asking for her fingers so that we can file or trim her nails if they get a little bit long. Um, she might present her or she presents her hip for us and that's how we can do annual vaccinations voluntarily. So very similar to what you just saw um, with the insulin, we can do that with her annual vaccinations that she gets as well. Um, so you'll see that as Jen is going through the training session. She also presents different parts of her body that just allow for a daily visual inspection on her. Um, she'll present her tongue or her chest um, or turn around and show her back. This allows us to get a good look at her and make sure she doesn't have any cuts or any areas that might be indicative of pain or an injury. Um, and we like to do this every day so that we just get a general look at her and we know if something comes up that it's, that it's recent. So she's trained for all those different behaviors. Um, and if she does it wrong, that's totally fine. We never um, punish her, it's all positive reinforcement. So if she does something wrong or gets confused, we simply just ignore it and we move on and she's gonna work on something else, regain some of that momentum and then get the positive reinforcement that she's working for, which in this case um, is a little bit of fruit, some vegetables, right now she's getting uh, canned chicken, which is one of her favorites. You can maybe you can hear her. She's making some high-pitched noises and vocalizations that show that she's excited um, when she's training. 
she gets really excited when she does things correctly, which is awesome. It's just reinforcing that she's doing it right, but then she's also getting some of her favorite foods as well. So she's a really fun given to train for sure. <laughs> Thank you to Inger and Claudine and Cheryl who have all donated. If you missed it at the beginning, we said that Coda Coffee, our very generous partner, is matching donations today up to $2,500. So you can really help support Denver Zoo today. Send us on a really high note into the weekend for our virtual safaris uh, by donating. And also, if you're a coffee lover, you can buy your coffee through Coda Coffee and use the code DENZOO, that is D-E-N-Z-O-O, -O, at checkout. A portion of those proceeds will come back to Denver Zoo to support all the work we do here. Jody says she's very smart to present her fingers like that. Are gibbons known for being highly intelligent? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, gibbons are primates, they are lesser apes. So a lot of times uh, people see the gibbons and they think due to their size and the, their ability to climb that they are monkeys. Uh, but they actually are apes, they're lesser apes. So more similar to uh, the great apes like orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees. And the easiest way to tell that they are an ape is because they don't have a tail. Um, but along with that lesser ape status, it does um, come with some intelligence. So they are very smart animals. Um, not quite as smart as orangutans and gorillas, but still have a very high level of intelligence, which we can take advantage of when we're training and ask them to do certain things like presenting their fingers or presenting her shoulder for insulin. Where can you find uh, Vin's species in the wild and where specifically did Vin come from? Uh, so Vin was born at a zoo in Australia and then she actually went to a small zoo in Idaho before coming here to the Denver Zoo. Uh, but her species, Northern White Cheek Gibbons, are found in Southeast Asia, Asia specifically uh, Vietnam, Laos, uh, southern parts of China. Uh, Briscoe, though, is a different species of gibbon. Uh, it's not super easy to tell just by the way he looks, but he is a buff-cheeked gibbon instead of a white-cheeked gibbon. Um, and these guys are also found in areas of Vietnam um, and through Southeast Asia as well. And these aren't the only two gibbons we have. Correct. Um, we have other gibbons in Primate Panorama. Uh, Briscoe's son actually lives over there, and Briscoe used to live over there before he came over to Toyota Elephant Passage. But these two in. are a great fit for Toyota Elephant Passage. Yes, they are. If you've ever been to the zoo, there's a pavilion where these two hang out, swing around, and you can see gibbons, elephants, rhinos, all at the same time when you come visit us. So are we ready to go outside and see these two? All right, we have one more behavior for Vin to do. <laughs> so every day at around lunchtime, we do bring the gibbons inside to this behind the scenes area to do this training and give them their medications um, and get a close look at them. But then afterwards, when the weather is nice enough, we usually ask them to come outside onto their exhibit and get some exercise by swinging around and brachiating on the ropes on the exhibit. So we're gonna move out there and call them out and hopefully they'll join us and you guys can see them uh, like you would if you could visit the zoo. Sure, and let's answer some questions while we walk. Absolutely. Isaac and Anderson would like to know how big Vin is. It can be kind of hard to tell via video sometimes. Yeah, that's a great question. So Vin uh, is about nine kilograms, so 20-ish pounds. Um, she is really long. She's got really long arms and pretty long legs too, but she's often not fully standing on the ground. They would, their arms would drag on the ground. So they're not super great at walking on the ground. They like to be up in the trees because those long arms allow them to move a lot better and they're a lot, feel a lot safer up in the trees where they're really great at moving like you can see as they're coming outside for some more treats. Let's see. Let's go. Uh, is diabetes common in primates and monkeys? So here's um, been doing. We have seen um, some cases throughout um, our zoo, but also through other zoos as well in primates. Uh, their diet is very high in sugar because most primates are frugivores, so they're eating a lot of fruit. Um, and as we continue to learn about these animals by the research that we're doing in managed care, we're learning that the fruits they would naturally be eating are a lot more similar to the domestic vegetables that we have here. So it's really important that we're looking at the nutritional value of the different produce items that she is getting as well. Um, so we've made a lot of changes to her diet to accommodate that as well and decrease the overall sugar that she receives. Um, so she does get a little bit of fruit still, uh, but she also gets certain produce items and vegetables that are low in sugar. So some of the fruit items that she likes a lot are berries and cherries. Um, and then she also really likes vegetables like bell pepper, 
beet, carrot, um, and jicama are some of her favorite that are low in sugar as well. And the vegetables are what they're getting here outside. Um, they're a lot easier for us to toss over to the gibbons, um, but they are reinforcing enough that they're willing to kind of move around and break it around the islands for exercise and get those items as a reinforcement. So Rosemary is asking a very common question that we see a lot when we talk about the gibbons. Can they swim? Um, as people can tell, the only thing keeping Vin on that island is the fact that it's surrounded by water. Yes, that's a great question. Um, they cannot swim. Their arms are super long um, and they're just not built for swimming. They're built for brachiating, which is that kind of monkey bar motion that you saw when she went across the ropes. Um, so they don't swim. They also don't like water. So the, the pools here, like Carly was saying, is what may, contains them in their exhibit. So they're not gonna swim or you know swim out of the exhibit but they're also not going to fall down from the ropes either we get that question a lot is what happens if they fall but they're really good climbers they're really confident in their climbing and they know that these ropes are too high if they were to drop down they would hurt themselves so that's a re really cool way to keep them contained but also give our visitors a great opportunity to view them ryan's wondering how the keepers at access the islands for service and maintenance and it's pretty much just thrown on waders and walking out. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so there are some paths built that are more shallow in the pool and we'll throw on waders in the morning and go out and service the island, set up food and enrichment, pick up any feces or anything else that's left over from the day before. Uh, great question. Amethyst says, this is not a question, but I have seen one of these two urinate on a group of people below. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was probably Vin. Um, that is something she is known for. So we have some signs when you enter the Gibbon Boardwalk area in Toyota Elephant Passage that warn you it is a splash zone. Um, I do think that Vin has learned over time though, if she, if she goes to the bathroom on the boardwalk, then people tend to leave. They don't really like that. But if she goes in the water right next to the boardwalk, then everyone gets generally pretty excited. They laugh, they scream, but they stick around. And Vin really likes it when guests hang out and watch her and cheer her on. So she's, she's definitely learning to keep it off the boardwalk. Yes. All right. Let's go see if we can talk about Briscoe a little bit. We'll come back, Vin. Don't worry. <laughs> Briscoe is our buff cheek gibbon. Yes. And it might be a little confusing because Vin is the one with the white face and she's got the white body, but yes. it's Briscoe who is the buff cheek gibbon. Yes. So Briscoe is a different species. So he's a buff cheeked gibbon, also known as a golden cheeked gibbon or a red cheeked gibbon. Briscoe's cheeks particularly aren't very golden. Uh, they're more white. Um, and their coloration is pretty similar to this, the differences in the species between Vin species, the white cheeked gibbon and the buff cheeked gibbon. So both of these species, when they are born, they are that beige color so that they blend in with their mother. And then around a year to a year and a half old, um, all individuals will turn to have a black coat. And then around six years old, when they're sexually mature, the females will turn back to that beige color. So this happens in both of these species. Um, so Briscoe doesn't look terribly different from a male northern white-cheeked gibbon, but technically, yes, he is a buff-cheeked gibbon. Um, so we do have two different species living here, but they are not paired together for breeding. They are paired together for companionship. So it's totally fine that they're different species and they get along super well. Uh, Sam wants to know if we groom them. That's a great question. We don't groom them, but they groom each other. So if they get an avocado schmear on their coat, they might groom it themselves, but Finn's probably the one that's gonna come over and groom it. She loves to groom Briscoe. It's a really good sign that they're really well bonded. Uh, we've done some studies here uh, or looking at the behavior and activity budgets of these two gibbons and they spend the majority of their time grooming each other. So it's really important that they have that strong bond with each other. And there goes Vin. She's back on this side of the island. She's having a great time. How old is Briscoe? Briscoe will be 23 in August and Vin will actually have her 30th birthday in August as well. Oh, wow. They are so fun. So, hi, Katie. Um, you can tell Hope that their names are Briscoe. This is Briscoe. And that is Vin. Let's see. We just answered how old they are. Uh, hi Zoe, these guys are in Toyota Elephant Passage. It's where we house a lot of our Asian based species, including our greater one horned rhinos, our Malayan taper, our gibbons, our saurus cranes, our clouded leopards. So there's a lot more to see than elephants at Toyota Elephant Passage, um, but that's where you will find them on the pavilion here. And sometimes you'll actually see another animal in the background, like Bandu, our greater one horned rhino, our male 
male greater one horned rhino? Hannah has a great question. Do they know how to climb when they're born? Uh, so when they're born, they're gonna hang out with mom. So like I was mentioning earlier, when they're born, they're all that beige color, whether they're a female or a male, and that's gonna help them blend in with mom. So they're gonna be holding on to her, and as she's climbing and breaking, eating around the forest, that's where the babies will be. And then as they start to get more mobile, uh, they're gonna their coats are gonna change into that black fur, um, and that's because as they're moving throughout the trees, that's gonna help them blend in more with the shadows. Um, so that's kind of about where they start to get a little bit more mobile. Katie's curious if they're soft. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, Vin, Vin keeps herself as well as Briscoe pretty groomed. So they're pretty clean, but not quite as soft as maybe your dog at home or your cat. Um, they've still kind of got a little bit of a coarse fur. Look at that balance. So not only can they did you say brachiate? Brachiate. So yeah, brachiating is when they're doing that kind of monkey bar motion. Um, but what Vin was just doing was a uh, bipedal locomotion. So that's when they're just kind of walking on those, those two legs um, across a rope or a, a vine or a tree branch. Um, and they're also really good at that. Um, but because their arms are so long, they never are really walking on all fours. Uh, Jill's an awesome listener. She said, you're, you said they're not paired together for breeding, but does Vin will she get another breeding room recommendation? Will we ever bring another gibbon on here for breeding? That is a great question. Um, Brin, Vin is not an individual that's recommended for breeding due to some of her medical history. She also had a hysterectomy, so she's unable to breed. Um, but that doesn't mean that they don't, they don't breed for um, bonding purposes. She just wouldn't be able to carry any offspring. Uh, Theo is five. He wants to know how strong their grip is. Uh, their grip is really strong, so you can kind of see right now how Briscoe's using his hand like a hook. He's not really using his thumb uh, to kind of grip onto it too much. He's just using his four fingers like a, like a hook, and they're super strong and able to hold themselves up. up. A lot of times, Vin will hang from this rope above the boardwalk, and she'll be up there for you know, five to ten minutes just holding on. Um, as people cheer for her and cheer her on, she really likes to show off her strength that way. So do you think she's one of our species that's really, or our individuals really, who's missing the public? Absolutely. Vin misses the public, misses the guests. Um, she, anytime that other keepers or any staff from around the zoo are walking by, she definitely tries to show off. So she's really excited that the group of us here is here filming her. Um, we have also asked staff as they're walking around the zoo to come and say hi to her when she's out here on those warmer days so she can still get that interaction that she really enjoys. So the great thing about Denver is that one day it can be snowing all day and be very cold and then the next it's sunny, gorgeous, 45 degrees. Uh, do these guys like the snow? They do not. Um, they generally don't like to come outside unless it's sunny and warm, um, but also for safety reasons, we generally don't have them come out here if it's super snowy or covered in snow or icy because they are relying on these ropes to move around and stay out of the water. If they're covered in ice or snow, it could be a safety concern. So this morning before we brought the gibbons outside, we, make sh we made sure to clear the ropes of any snow or icicles uh, and make sure that nothing was too slippery for them to come out here. Uh, Cheryl's curious if this is the biggest uh, gibbon can be. Do they get bigger? Or are they full grown? These are both full grown uh, for their species. They're about the right size. So Vin is about nine kilograms and Briscoe's more around eight. So when you look at him, he doesn't look significantly smaller than Vin, but he's a lot leaner, um, which is a little, makes him a little bit smaller than her in terms of their weight. Eddie's curious, do gibbons like carrots? Carrots are definitely one of their favorite vegetables. So we use carrots specifically when we're training them because they are one of their favorites. Other vegetables like broccoli or zucchini, they don't like as much. So we generally save those for um, scatter feeds and forage feeds. Uh, but if we're training them, we do pull carrots, bell peppers, uh, cucumber, beets, and jicama out. And those are their favorite vegetables. Um, who would you say is more adventurous? Vin, absolutely. Um, Vin is super confident in her climbing. She's more adventurous. She's generally the first one to approach something new, whether it's in the behind the scenes area or out here on exhibit. Um, Briscoe is a little bit more laid back. He's gonna generally watch Vin take the lead before kind of exploring something new. Uh, the third island that Vin was on earlier when she was getting fed, 
uh, Briscoe hasn't gone to yet. So that's the one that requires the Gibbons to go over the boardwalk and over the guests. And Briscoe has not done that yet. So um, we're letting him take his time, make sure he builds that confidence before he heads over there. Um, there's no reason he needs to go over there. Everything that he would need out on the exhibit, like food and water and shade is all on these first two islands. Um, that kind of shows her adventurous behavior as well. So if you've ever seen that other smaller island and where gibbons are on there, that's got to be Ben. Yes. Briscoe hasn't gone over there. Yes. So Isaac and Anderson want to know if they have toys or enrichment items they really like. Yes. Um, some of their favorite enrichment items are things that uh, they can hold. So Briscoe really likes to hold uh, small balls like golf balls or Easter eggs in his feet and carry them around with him. So that's definitely one of his favorite toys. And then Vin's favorite enrichment is anything that has to do with food. So whether we hide her food in a paper bag or string it up high so she has to climb for it or put it in some sort of manipulation station, which would be an object that requires her to uh, move something in order to reach the food, that's definitely her favorite. Uh, Jessica said, is asking on behalf of her kids, Henry and Lucy, are they ticklish? Um, I don't know. That's a great question. Um, they seem to groom each other quite a lot, even in areas that might be ticklish, like their armpits and they don't seem to be too squirmy. So probably not. Uh, Hope age nine says, do they ever fall into the water? We kind of answered this, that they're really confident climbers and brachiators and they're not likely to fall into the water. Yes. And we monitor their mobility. So if we had any concerns, maybe Vin was showing signs that her arm was hurting, then we would be able to manage her that way and maybe not give her the opportunity to come outside and potentially injure herself. But we've never had a given fall in the water. Um, they trust themselves. They're super strong and healthy. Um, so it makes this exhibit really awesome for them. Uh, Kyle has a great question. Have they ever interacted with the rhino? Does Bandu or Tenzing notice them? Do they notice the rhinos or elephants? I think they'll watch each other sometimes when we're doing these feedings. Sometimes the rhinos and elephants um, are curious in what, all, what we're doing and uh, how we're feeding them or what's being thrown out to the islands. When it's summer and the elephants are swimming in the pool, they definitely um, like to watch them as well. Or if the elephant keepers are doing a training session with the animals, the gibbons definitely tend to watch as well. So it looks like Ben's trying to get a good lay of the land, see who's out here. Right now, there she goes again. She's so speedy. Everyone's commenting on how fast they are. Yes, they are super fast. They're one of the fastest animals that live in the trees um, other than the animals that fly. Here's a question for you, Kelsey. Uh, do you as keepers rotate which animals you care for or do you tend to specialize? We tend to specialize, um, but rotate a little bit within that specialization. So the team that takes care of the gibbons is part of the predators team. So we take care of all of the small animals that live in Toyota Elephant Passage, anything that's not a taper, a rhino or an elephant. So that means the gibbons, the clouded leopards, the fishing cats, um, and some of the birds as well. Um, but this team also takes care of the animals that live in Predator Ridge, the different social African carnivores. So some of us that are on the Predators team work in both areas and some of us specialize in one of those areas. So that balance creates a good opportunity to share our expertise um, and then make sure that enough of us are here to care for the animals every day as well. Uh, Rosanna wants to know how do they bond with each other? How do Vin and Briscoe bond and are they expressive? Yeah, great question. So when we first introduced Vin and Briscoe, uh, we wanted to make sure they had that bond and we saw positive behaviors between the two. So when we first introduced them inside the back holding area that you guys saw the training in earlier, we gave them a howdy opportunity. So this was an opportunity where they could see each other, slightly touch each other, but they couldn't fully interact with each other. So there was a mesh barrier between them. And we were looking for things like them sitting next to each other, them calling for each other and vocalizing at each other, um, and then maybe reaching for touch. So when we started the introductions, that's where we started and we saw some really good behaviors and desire for them to be together. Uh, so when we opened the doors, we were looking for that as well. They've approached each other, they started grooming each other pretty quickly, um, and that was a really good sign that they were well bonded. Lucas wants to know if they ever hold hands. <laughs> um, Probably, they don't hold hands in, in the way that we hold hands. It's not really a behavior for primates that indicates that they are closely bonded. Um, but when they do groom each other, a lot of times they're kind of hooked onto each other. Maybe their arms are hooked or maybe Vin's holding onto his foot as she's grooming him. Christopher has a great question. Do gibbons live in troops like other primates? Great question. Uh, gibbons do not. So gibbons are 
uh, gonna live in a pair and they are monogamous, which means they're gonna stay with the individual they are paired with um, for their entire life. So they're gonna generally just live with the two gibbons and then if they have offspring, the offspring would stay with them as well until they were sexually mature. Um, and th those gibbons are gonna maintain a territory in the forest and the way that they do that is by their morning call. So if you've ever been here early enough, you might hear their, their song that they sing together. It's a territorial display. They're, they're marking their territory and making sure that they've kind of claimed that area of the forest. Uh, Zoe age eight wants to know if keepers ever fo throw food in the water. Uh, no, we it sometimes lands there. Yes. We're never <laughs> aiming for it, uh, but it's pretty fun to watch. They'll kind of wait for it to float on over uh, before they try to get it. Yeah, it only ends up in the water if we miss, which um, does happen sometimes, but like Carly was saying, they never really go in the water for the food. They do not like the water. They're pretty smart. They'll watch it kind of. Oh, she's actually gonna do part of her song. Um, oh, so sometimes she'll you do tell? that when she's outside. So I, I don't know if it was picked up on the camera, but she kind of started doing that. Ooh, noise, um, which she sometimes does when she's out here. Briscoe usually doesn't pick up with it unless it's the morning time when they normally sing. Um, but she's just trying to get attention from us for sure. She doesn't want us to leave. We've had a lot of questions about what their lifespan is. Yeah, so like I said earlier, Vin's gonna be 30 in August and Briscoe is 23. These animals definitely can live into their 50s, but that is very old for them. So uh, more common is into their 30s or 40s. If we stick around, we might hear her start her vocalization. <laughs> yeah, she was doing it a little bit there again. <laughs> she's, she's interested in doing it. She's thinking about it. We'll take a couple more questions and just kind of watch. <laughs> she's doing it quietly, but... If you notice, she's getting up really high, which is usually what she does when she's singing. She tries to get to the highest part of the enclosure, and a lot of times she swings really aggressively too. She gets really into her morning song. Um, the awesome social media coordinator that we have, Christina, who's answering all your questions in the comments, she's gonna be very jealous because she really loves to hear. <laughs> she really uh, wants to capture them singing. Yes. <laughs> we never I've seem to be able to. I've been trying to get a video, but when they normally do it when they're inside and it's really, really loud and echoes. Um, so we're actually supposed to wear ear protection if we're in there when they're singing. Um, so it's hard to get a video that really shows how loud and beautiful it is. Uh, Angela is wondering, do we ever run out of ideas for enrichment tools or we just recycle ones that we have? Uh, that's a great idea. The nice thing about working on a team is that we all have different ideas that we can implement. And then we're also always talking with zookeepers at other zoos um, and other facilities, trying to get ideas of things that we do, that they do to enrich their animals. A lot of times being on Facebook or Instagram um, is a great way to see what other zoos are doing and get ideas that way as well. There she goes. <laughs> oh, she's kind of starting there. You can kind of see her lips pursing. Come on, Vin, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> um, Eddie wants to know if they like grapes, lemons, watermelons. Great question. Vin loves grapes, but <laughs> she's talking over me. <laughs> she loves grapes, but she's not allowed to have them anymore because we've changed her diet to manage her diabetes. Grapes are pretty high in sugar. Um, they do get citrus through grapefruit, but not lemon. Um, and then watermelon is not an approved fruit item either. Um, but they do get tons of variety. So in addition to fruit and vegetables, they get a variety of lettuce and greens. And then we have a portion of their diet that is variable each day. So any day it could be nut butter, like cashew butter or peanut butter. It could be nuts. Uh, cashews are definitely one of their favorites. It might be hard boiled egg canned chicken uh, they just recently got approved to have beans and olives so we're gonna try that soon this week and hopefully they like that but we we think it's really important to have variety in their diet for sure all right so sam yeah they like sugar but we try not to to give them too much of it because that's not good for their diet that's not good for anyone's diet so um Let's see, we've answered their lifespan. They're not likely to come off that island, Isaac, because they don't like to swim, they don't like the water, and the ropes are high enough that they know that they can't just leap down from them. So hope that answers your question there. Um, have they been more or less vocal with out guests here, do you think? Um, I think 
probably about the same. Uh, they get really excited when we come by um, and have some vocalizations there too. Um, but when the guests are here, they're doing that just as much. Does she often do this sort of like start and stop with the singing or? She does when she's outside. It's not a normal time that they call. Um, so occasionally we'll just hear her do like one, one little verse of her song and then stop. Uh, Briscoe probably is wondering why she's singing at this odd time of day. So he never really joins in, which usually is what causes her to stop. So a lot of times she'll try to start the song, but he's a, got a very integral, integral part as well. Um, and he sounds a lot different than her. <laughs> awesome, yeah, man, that yay. was so cool. So that was kind of one like verse of her song and then generally Briscoe would chime in. His um, sound is a lot different, which is typical for individuals to sound different. Um, and then when she got really excited and kind of threw herself around there, that's pretty typical of her, her singing behavior as well. Hi, Teresa. We can't accept food donations, but we can accept monetary donations and that will go toward things like their food, their veterinary care, all the things that we do to take care of the animals here. So you can donate right through that Facebook button. Um, as a reminder for anyone who's just joining us, Coda Coffee is matching donations today up to $2,500. So thank you to them. And if you're a coffee lover and you want to shop local here in Denver, you can go to Coda Coffee's website and type in Den Zoo when you check out and they will donate a portion of their proceeds back to the zoo. So thank you so much to our partners, Coda Coffee. Thank you to your hometown Toyota stores. We are at Toyota Elephant Passage right now. This is the exhibit where Vin and Briscoe live. So very special thank you to your hometown Toyota stores who make this possible, this wonderful interactive exhibit. So thank you to everyone. I think we really can't leave on a better note than Vin's song. I agree. So we're gonna sign off. Have a great weekend, everyone. We'll be back here Monday and signing off. I'm Carly, it's Kelsey, and that's Finn and Briscoe over there. Thanks everyone.